Hi everyone, it's Dr. Hall, and we're gonna do the deep and intermediate muscles of the back today. So I have my handy skeleton, and you can see I've already put in place a couple of muscles here. So extending from the transverse process of a vertebrae, up past the next vertebrae and attaching to the base of the spinous process of the next one after that, we find the rotatories muscles. So they are our deepest muscles. And of course, this um, skeleton is not all that anatomically correct. So here is a spine model. This happens to be lumbar spine. And so these rotatories muscles attach from the transverse process up to the base of the vertebrae that is two away. So they, they cross two joints. And of course, if these contract, they will rotate the spine. So those are the rotatories muscles. They're also important for stabilizing the spine. And they think it might have something to do with proprioception as well. So that ability to sense where your body is in space. So there's our little representative rotatories muscle there. And we're gonna move on to the other deepest muscles. So next is the multifidus muscle. And the multifidus muscle has a broad attachment down here on the sacrum and then extends up along the spine on either side. So it's very medial. There's our multifidus muscle. And here we go on the other side. The third and final of the deepest muscles is the semispinalis muscle. And the semispinalis muscle is also gonna be medially located along the spine, but it's more superior than the multifidus. Now this part attaches way up here on the skull. And so this part of the semispinalis muscle is called the semispinalis capitis, as in caput or head. And that's gonna be an interesting feature because although this is one of our deepest muscles, this semispinalis capitis, let me make sure you can see it. Let me adjust my camera here a little bit. Semispinalis capitis is going to be visible to us um, even when we're in pretty, when we haven't dissected away some of the other layers. So it's, it's kind of cool. It's like it's always saying peekaboo. So that's our semispinalis muscle and multifidus rotatories are deep. So moving then from deep to the next layer, we're gonna go to the deep layers, okay? So the deep muscles, we're gonna find the erector spinae group. And that's a group of three muscles, the spinalis longissimus and iliocostalis. So moving from medial to lateral, the spinalis runs right along the spinous processes. Whoops, broke off a little bit there right along the spinous processes on each side. So here is my spinalis muscle. Now that's tricky, right? Because this is spinalis. The deeper one is semispinalis. Nobody wants to stick today. Let's see if we can make that happen. Okay, so semispinalis is deeper, part of the deepest muscles. And the spinalis is part of the erector spinae group. So the next muscle in the erector spinae group is the longissimus. Now, isimus, of course, in Latin means kind of the most. So this is the longest of the erector spinae group. So this muscle is going to go from all the way down on the sacrum, extend all the way up and attach to the mastoid process, believe it or not. Whoops, it keeps wanting to fall off. All right. Ugh. Okay, so this is the longissimus muscle. As we move from medial to lateral, it's the next one of the erector spinae group. Okay, let's see if we can get this one to stick. I don't think the odds are very good. Yeah, we'll see. So, semispinalis, spinalis, longissimus. And then the third of the three erector spinal is the iliocostalis. So it attaches to the ilium and then up to the ribs. Makes sense, right? So iliocostalis muscle here on each side. Now these three muscles of the erector spinae group 
the iliocostalis, longissimus, and spinalis all have a common attachment down here. So even though the iliocostalis is more lateral, attaches more to the ilium, spine, uh, longissimus is more to the sacrum, and spinalis is more to the uh, spinous processes, they all kind of come together into an aponeurosis or a dense band of connective tissue inferiorly. I remember these muscles as ILS, I love Sally. And then I remember the deep ones as she makes reg rigatoni. So semispinalis, multifidus, and then the rotatories. So I love Sally, she makes for multifidus uh, rigatoni for rotatories. And that's how I remember those six muscles. So we've done the deepest and the deep, the erector spinae group. And now it's time to do the splenius muscles. So the word splenius comes from the Latin term for bandage. Somebody thought these muscles looked like a bandage. I don't know. They look like a chevron shape. So we have the splenius capitis, which attaches to the head. And fiber direction is like this. It's really cool looking actually. Fiber direction is like this. So like a chevron. And then right inferior to it, we have one on each side, the splenius cervicis. Now the separation between these muscles is not obvious. The main difference is that one is attaching up to the skull or the caput. The other is attaching to the transverse processes of the cervical vertebrae. Hence splenius cervicis, splenius capitis. All right, we only have two muscles left. Can you believe it? <laughs> And they're these really, really pretty muscles. So we're going to find here, so this is an, now our intermediate group. So, and I, these get classified as deep, but I think they're kind of intermediate too, but nobody really asked me. All right, we're gonna find these muscles here. So this is two muscles. I've just kind of shown them attached because that's how they look in real life. And this is called the serratus posterior superior. So it does have kind of a jaggedy edge on it, hence the name serratus. I know mine doesn't. Uh, fiber direction is like this and like this. And these attach from the spinous processes to the ribs. Now, unfortunately, in this model, it looks like it's attaching to the scapula. It's not. It's attaching to the ribs underneath the scapula, which unfortunately with this model, I can't uh, move the scapula out of the way. And then we also have a serratus posterior inferior down here, attaching also from the spinous processes to the ribs. And I love these muscles. They're very, very thin in real life and they have very, very shiny tendons. So they're very pretty. So watch for those when you do the dissection. So let's review everybody. So we have serratus posterior superior, serratus posterior inferior. And of course you remember the serratus anterior which attaches to the deep surface of the scapula and comes around to the anterior surface of the ribs. So there's our serratus posterior superior, serratus posterior inferior, remove those. Then we have splenius capitis attaching to the head or the caput, splenius cervicis attaching to the cervical vertebrae. And look, see this whole time semispinalis capitis is, is in view, which I just think is super cool. All right, now everybody wants to stick together. <laughs> then we have the erector spinae group. So going from lateral to medial, I love Sally, iliocostalis, because it goes from the ilium to the ribs or the costas. Longissimus, love, I love Sally, love longissimus, the longest one. And then Sally, spinalis, the one that's right along the spinous processes. So I love Sally right there. And I'm going to remove it from just this side only. And then the very deepest muscles are she makes rigatoni, semispinalis, multifidus, and rotatories. Okay. One more time. Rotatories, multifidus, semispinalis, spinalis, longissimus, iliocostalis, Oops, I messed up my splenius muscles. Splenius cervicis, it's looking a little worse for the wear. Splenius capit, or sorry, splenius capitis, splenius cervicis. Serratus posterior superior, 
serratus posterior inferior. There you go. Have a great day.